So we are in APY 244, Child and Adolescent Development. Chelsea, you need a paper. I love this class because there's a lot of diversity that we talk about and we go over a lot of things that we usually wouldn't speak about in other educational development classes. I'll let you guys take it away. If you want to control lights, if you want to dim. Today we did our presentations based off of our article summaries. So we all got to hear a little bit about the different things people read about. You need to be certified. A lot of times it can be like. So everyone in this class really likes talking to each other. We kind of bounce off each other's ideas. By punishing a student so young, or punishing a student in general, it's taking away that aspect of self-esteem. They're not feeling great about themselves. They're not believing in themselves. So then that's preventing them from reaching self-actualization. I liked my topic. I thought it was really interesting. So do you think that these negative punishments and therefore associations that these punishments create with the school really like set students up to fail? If you're not giving a preschool student the time that they deserve um, as a preschool student to talk about what's bothering them and talk about reasons why they're acting out. So if you talk to them about it, they're probably gonna learn from it. Just suspending them and just kind of like getting them out of your hands gives them the idea at a young <coughs> age that we don't wanna deal with you and that your issues aren't important to us. A lot of people don't know that preschoolers get suspended, so I think it's definitely something that current teachers need to know about and that future teachers need to know about on how to give students the proper techniques to handle their problems instead of just kicking them out of the school. When a teacher mispronounces the name, it's sort of like, as an authoritarian figure, the students are going to listen to the teacher more. So I feel like, as a teacher, one should support and encourage a student to correctly pronounce their names. But if you think about it, some teachers get mad when you mispronounce their name. Mm -hmm. So it's like, are you really getting mad about something you're doing? You're kind of being a hypocrite. Sometimes it's older teachers in schools or they're uncomfortable with not being able to pronounce a name that's unfamiliar to them or that the teacher might have some like insecurity about that which sometimes manifests itself as the teacher being like a jerk. <laughs> Carly is great. She is super relatable and she knows how to talk to her students in a way that makes sense. She kind of makes the atmosphere a little bit more laid back and tries to make it more discussion based instead of just lecturing at us. But also she just makes you feel so at home and she's just really fun to be around. The students are always so great. Everyone's really involved in the discussions. They enjoy talking about this kind of stuff. They enjoy thinking about how they're going to grapple with these issues when they're school professionals. And they get to share their diversity of experience with one another and help each other understand kind of other perspectives on a real personal level because people who are going to be school professionals or just adults in children's lives really need to be aware of this diversity of experience. That, so speaking of the Mezzo system in Brunson Brenner's, a lot of the students who you